Thank you to the Junior League of Roanoke Valley for supporting this video. Hey Explorers, welcome back to another exciting episode of Get Schooled. I'm Miss Danielle and today we're going to be exploring the amazing world of physics. Have you ever wondered why things move the way that they do? Today we're going to be exploring Newton's three laws of motion to explain that. But before we join Daniel James at the Virginia Tech Helmet Lab, let's talk about something that we've all experienced. Motion. From cars zipping down the highway to balls flying through the air, motion is all around us and it impacts our life every day. Today we're going to be talking about Sir Isaac Newton's hey. three laws of motion and explaining what they are with helmets and impact. Ouch but not concussions. From the first law, which tells us that objects in motion stay in motion unless acted upon by an external force, to the second law, which explains how the force of an object is related to its mass and acceleration. And finally, the third law, which states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. We're getting ready to hop on the phone with Daniel James and explore all three of those laws. Hey Daniel, how are you today? How's the Helmet Lab? Hi Daniel. So today we're going to be joining forces with my friend Barry Miller and his team here at the Helmet Lab who are going to be teaching us about Newton's three laws of motion. Hey Daniel. Hi Barry. How are you? I'm good. We're excited to be here at the Virginia Tech Helmet Lab to demonstrate some of these laws of motion. All right, so can you explain why are these called laws? Are they legally binding? They're not legally binding. However, these are hypotheses that have been proven to be true and now accepted as laws. So today we're going to be proving them. Nope, we're not going to prove them, but we're certainly going to demonstrate them. That's fantastic. Let's head over. Hi. Hi, Kamiko. So I hear that you're going to tell us about Newton's first law of motion. Yes, so Newton's first law of motion states that an object in rest stays in rest an object in motion remains in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. Cool. So what does that mean? Do you know when you're riding on a bike? Yeah. And you hit the brakes? Yeah. And you launch forward a bit? Yeah. That inertia. Oh, because my body wants to keep going, but it's being stopped by the brakes. Yes. So Kamiko, is there a way that we can explore this in the lab here? Yes. Fantastic. I'm ready. <laughs> Almost caught it. Here's the pendulum. It is now at rest, and as I raise it up, it is in motion. And the helmet is at rest now, but as I let go, the helmet will be in motion. Hi, Susanna. I hear you're going to be teaching us about Newton's second law of motion. Yeah, so Newton's second law of motion states that the greater the mass, the larger the force will be needed to accelerate it. Or as I like to say, the bigger the thing, the more force will be needed to move it. Okay, that makes total sense. Now, is there a way that we can demonstrate that here in the lab? Of course. So this is our drop tower. On our drop tower, we have a bike helmet, which weighs about a pound, and we have a football helmet, which weighs about five pounds. So when I drop them from roughly the same height, we'll see that the bike helmet will have a smaller force acting on it than the football helmet, since the football helmet has a larger mass. And we do this to measure how well each of the helmets can absorb the energy um, from getting dropped. Fantastic. Can I hit the button? Well, actually, it's a switch, and we can both do it. OK, cool. You tell me when. Do you want to count down? Uh, sure. Three, two, one. That was fun. <laughs> Two, one. Hey, Daniel. Hi, Adam. I hear that you're going to be teaching us about Newton's third law of motion. Yep. Newton's third law of motion is that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Awesome. Is there a good way we can demonstrate that? So if we take one of these heads and toss a helmet on for safety. Okay. See, look, you're already all safe there now. Yeah. Now, when we take these heads and we mash them together, 
Having padding on it uh, elongates the amount of time that it takes for the uh, force to hit each other. So by doing that, we minimize the amount of force that goes into each head. Just like with these full Pahamas up here, more padding softens the blow, elongating the amount of time that it takes for the force to get to you. Awesome, thank you so much for explaining that, Adam. Thank you, Miss Danielle. That was such an impactful lesson. So we had such a great time here at the Helmet Lab and I wanted to just review things and make sure we understand everything that we've learned so far. So we learned about Newton's three laws of motion. The first of which is that an object at rest will remain at rest and an object in motion will remain in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. So Newton's second law states that the greater the mass of an object is, the greater the force needs to be to act upon it to move it. And the third law of Newton's is, oh no. Miss Danielle, what's the third? The third law is that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Get your head in the game. Thanks.